This is KWPB LP Newport. I am Vicki Clifton. I am an evangelist from the Pentecostal Church of God in Toledo. My pastor is Claude Smith. My husband, Don, is presently here helping me with the broadcast today. So glad you're listening today. Look forward to giving out a broadcast every week. And so here we go. My uh, message or, or uh, teaching is from John chapter 40. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from this place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face uh, was also bound with a napkin. That was to cover his face. And Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. And that's what I would say today is loose them and let them go. And so uh, I'm going to be speaking about speaking to that mountain that's in the way that has caused you a problem. And uh, it seems like that mountain just doesn't want to move. But the Bible speaks about having faith. And I'll bring out this Matthew 17, 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, I think uh, there's a lot of us here that at different times we've gave up on the Lord. We've just gone on. And uh, our faith has been very weak at times. But, you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so it just goes on to say, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you know, a mustard seed is really small. And so uh, if you have just a small bit of faith, you know what, you can move those mountains. And, and I'm thinking particularly, you know, those that are bound today, uh, just like Lazarus was, you know what, he had died. If you go back into the story of Lazarus, to, he had died and he'd been dead for four days. Think of that, you know, that's a long time to be dead. And uh his uh, sister had said to the Lord, Lord, he's been dead for four days. And you know what else she said to him? She said, Lord, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. And that's disappointed. That's heartbreaking, isn't it? And you know, I've, I've been there uh, different places in my life where I couldn't understand. I just plain could not understand why the things happened the way they did. I thought God could have done it a different way to where I didn't have to go through that. Or what? what's it going to make any difference if I do go through something else, you know? But you know what? He is God and he loves faith. And so I'm so grateful for that. And I'm thinking of you all that uh, you're sick in body. You know, that's a tough one, you know, some are in the hospital or, or sick at home or, you know, uh, I've been around a lot of, uh, people with chronic pain to where it was a major thing for them to be able to even get up and, and go to the store or, or just be involved in some, some type of activity with other people because the pain would get to them. So, um. I'm speaking about that faith, as you have heard, and uh, my prayer is that, you know, you'll have a big breakthrough, and just with Lazarus, he was dead for four days, 
But you know what? That wasn't the end of the story. And when Jesus uh, uh, spoke, he, he, he cried out with a loud voice, actually, as the scriptures say. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face bound about and foot with uh, those grave clothes. And uh, he had a napkin over his face. And so what did the Lord say? As I have spoke this before, but I must say it again. Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. And so when he called out Lazarus' name, he came forth. And so what a sight to see. But, you know, he told the woman at the well, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And so we look to everything else sometimes in our life, don't we? We look to everything else rather than coming to the Lord because probably because of unbelief. You know, we think he, he won't do it anyway, but he will do that if we just hang in there with him. And, uh, you know, if we don't have enough faith, you know, begin to get in that prayer closet with the Lord and begin to cry out to him and to uh, spend time with him. And, and uh, you know what? He'll love on you and you'll love on him. And you know what? As a result, sometimes we're better after we go through a trial like that. You think we just fall off the edge, but no, you know, God's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. He says also, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And, you know, it's the enemy that will come in between and try to convince us of whatever you'll listen to him about. Uh, maybe you're not good enough or you missed it. You waited too long or or God doesn't like you and wouldn't heal you anyway. There's all kinds of things that he might throw in your pathway. And that's when you got to trust God with all your heart your mind and your soul and, and believe. And, you know, there's a song we used to sing years ago, only believe, only believe. And that's where it's at today. Don't lose your faith. My goodness. You know, a few years ago, I was watching uh, television and, and I, I can't remember the program where I was listening to, but it was about Reinhard Bonnke. And I don't know if some of you out there remember that evangelist, but he was a mighty man of God. And he was preaching somewhere, I believe it was in Africa, where um, they uh, had put a dead body in the bottom of the place where he was preaching. I think it was the basement. And uh, as he preached the word, he must have really preached, um, that man came alive that was dead. Now, I believe that that really did happen. I don't doubt in my heart that didn't doubt it. So... Um, Anyway, uh, even death isn't too hard for the Lord, as we see with Lazarus. You know, uh, he said, um, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, as I said before. Thoughts of peace and not of end, evil to give you an expected end. So w the times that I've been... Uh, struggling with a sickness of, of some type. Um, I have not all the time. Sometimes I go to the doctor, so don't think I don't. Uh, but sometimes my faith level is higher. And so I've even known, uh, before I even walk into the church sometimes, because he changes all the time. You never ha know how he's going to do things. Where I would say in my spirit, I would say, this is my night. And, you know, my faith was right there where it needed to be. And God healed me 
so many times. And so you never know. Sometimes I've uh, sought my healing, went up for prayer, didn't feel nothing. And then later on, those symptoms that I had before were gone. And Christ healed me. He doesn't have to uh, give you some special feeling or anything else. It's, his, it's the word of God that comes into place. Amen. Psalm 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so I love this scripture that wherever my feet go and that my feet be shod with a gospel of peace, amen, that my path would light up and there's nothing better than to have the presence of the Lord with me as I go into these different places. He is so good to me. And you know, there's nothing wrong with mentioning this either. For some of you that haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's a faith thing also. I just encourage you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of uh, with the evidence of the things not, oh, I'll get that straight pretty quick. Um, but anyway, get baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And so, um, anyway, uh, he will endue you with that power from on high. And so we're so glad for that, uh, you know, and, uh, if you haven't experienced it, like I said, um, you will never be sorry. And he will uh, move through you at times. The other gifts uh, uh, that he gives us uh, that uh, through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, you can operate in those gifts. Uh, amen. So um, this is the time. Oh, here's another one. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces? He's a consuming fire. And I tell you what, there's nothing. There's no enemy. Uh, he conquered death and the grave. And so he can do anything. And if you're, like I said, if you're sick and you don't feel good and you've had this sickness for a while or maybe even a little while, the healer is there. He is our healer. He's our baptizer. He's the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. So um, God... Uh, is going to move for you. And uh, I really believe that if you really, uh, you need someone else to walk with you, uh, pray with you, uh, that has, uh, you know, the gift of faith, there is that gift. And uh, you know what? Uh, they'll encourage you and uh, that you can reach out and touch the Lord. And I will say, while you're reaching out and touching him, he's touching you too. Amen. Well, uh, this is the time I'm going to uh, close. So I'm going to turn my husband, Donnie, over to you. Well, thank you for listening to, to Wounds of Praise. We're glad that you listened to Vicki's broadcast today. And if you missed this one that, uh, that, uh, that is broadcast on Thursday at 12 o'clock noon each week, you can find her broadcast on YouTube as well. Now, before we uh, sign off for the day, I just want to share a brief little testimony of God's grace. You know, He has done a lot of things for me in my life, but there's a few things that really stick out. One is that this time last year, I was hung up on smoking tobacco. Well, about eight months ago, the Lord delivered me from that. Another thing I want to mention is that I play bass guitar. I play it at our church. And years ago, if somebody had told me that I would have been lis listening, I mean, uh, playing bass guitar in church, I would have told them they were out of their mind. But 
Uh, with God's grace, that's what I'm doing. I'm playing bass guitar at the church. And another thing is, I ride a motorcycle, and if somebody told me that I'd be, uh, that I'd be riding motorcycle with the Christian Motorcycle Club, I'd have told them, no, that ain't going to happen. But it did happen. I'm a member of the Christian Motorcyclist Association. I'm not an active member, but I, uh, I am a member. It's just that I, I haven't found a uh, place that's close enough for me to get involved with. So anyway, I just want to say that thank you and God bless. And we will talk to you and, and see you again. Bye-bye and God bless.